How does President Donald Trump dress himself every morning? Michael McLean, Doc Coach. I am an ex-professional hockey coach, uh, championship amateur coach. I owned a couple of my own team franchises in the sports business most of my life, then turned eight-figure badass entrepreneur. You can subscribe for these daily email videos. I shoot these on my ugly, broken iPhone 7. I, I send them every day. I don't take any days off. 6 a.m. every day, I send you an email with one of these broken iPhone videos. Uh, not everybody's cup of whiskey, admittedly. You can sign up for free at michaelmcclain.coach. Nothing to buy in your email box every day at uh, 6 a.m. So a really, really strange and fascinating question. How does President Donald Trump, how does he dress himself every morning? Are you familiar with the morning routines of some of the most successful and most uh, interesting uh, peak performers, high achievers, high performance people. People are fascinated by their morning routines. At the end of the day, at the heel of the hunt, your morning routine has to serve you. You can't take something that, you know, a Steve Jobs or a Nick Saban or a Henry Ford used or an Andrew Carnegie or a Ronald Reagan or a Elon Musk. You can't take those things and just apply them to your life without some thought. So this is a question. I've studied a lot of the morning routines of the very, the great um, high performance people, especially in business and sales. And I have a pal who knows a guy knows a guy, right? Who actually was on the Trump um, security detail the first two years he was in the White House. And when he told me this, I was fascinated. I'm fascinated by all of our past presidents, anybody in a massive leader position. I wanna learn what they do well, what they don't do well, their habits, their weaknesses, their strengths. So he was telling me that his pa his buddy too, he said, two years with Trump in Washington on the security detail, he talked about how, you know, he would be sent late at night to go on a McDonald's to pick up some McDonald's from, you know, burnt cheeseburgers and fries. I mean, his diet is just the worst. And he would be, he would be summoned to to go pick up some hamburgers and some fries at, I don't know, two in the morning, one in the morning, whatever it was. And Trump would be up working, right? But one of the greatest stories, and I didn't hear it from this guy, I heard it from reading it several times, and it applies to you and to me in this way. All of the top 1% of 1% of 1%ers, I'm talking high performance people, whether they're an entrepreneur, whether they're a, a husband, whether they're a pro athlete, whether they're an artist, whether they're a musician, you have to get this in your head. We only have limited magic time and deep work per day. What the hell is magic time and deep work? It's that one or two if you're at the very top of your game, maybe three, maybe four hours, maybe the average person would have less than 10 minutes. And I call it magic time because it's the time right after you get out of bed that you're at your best. I don't care if you're a morning person or not a morning person. I don't, I don't care whether you think you're in a fog or whatever in the morning. The bottom line is you are at your creative best. You're writing, you're reading, you're thinking, your deep work, the stuff that brings you the money, whether you're, you know, strategizing, whether you're thinking of other ideas, your deep work happens in those first handful of hours every day. 
Admittedly, my deep work is anywhere, my magic time lasts anywhere from two to five hours. And I'm really stretching it with five hours is when I'm finishing a newsletter. So on most days, I have two to three hours of magic time deep work. And after those two to three hours, and I've trained myself over 20 years, 20 years to get to two to three hours. After those two to three hours, I'm dusted, I'm done. The rest of the day is uh, conquering the chaos, returning phone calls, returning emails. It's low performance time. I'm not writing, I'm not shooting videos, I'm not creating, I'm not doing any high leverage work. So my magic time is anywhere from two to five hours. And this is normal for peak for high performance achievers. So there's this huge myth out there that, you know, oh, I work eight hours or I work 10 hours. People say, yeah, I work 12 hours a day. Well, you may work 10 or 12 or 14 hours a day, but you sure as hell aren't doing deep work and you sure as hell aren't doing, it isn't magic time. You know, a lot of that's low end time because our brains and our bodies are literally fried. Okay, there's no more energy to get until the next day. Um, after an hour, two hours and three hours, whatever. And for most people who sleep with their cell phone, they're playing defense within 10 minutes. If you're one of these normies or tomato cans that sleeps with your phone or an iPad, and you open your eyes and you check your phone, this video doesn't even apply to you. You don't have any magic time. You don't have any deep work. All you're doing is getting up every day and playing somebody else's game. You're losing control of your day within 10 minutes. As soon as you check your messages, what's, what's in your text, what's in your email, what's on social media, somebody else's agenda. So this video doesn't apply to a person who is uh, sleeping with their phone beside them. I don't check my phone till 11 a.m., sometimes noon. So I'm playing offense till noon. I'm, I'm doing my deep work for two, three, four, sometimes five hours. And then I'm, I'm done, I'm done. The rest of the day I can piss around with this and that, but at the end of the day, and you may get a second wind, you know, like late in the afternoon or, a, or maybe you're one of these night owls. But, it's, but I can guarantee you out of 24 hours, you're only, you've only got one to three to four hours of deep work and magic time. The wealthier the person is, the more they cherish and use this magic time. So it brings me back to the stories of, guy, of a guy like Trump a guy like Steve Jobs, a guy like Elon Musk, a guy like Andrew Carnegie. I've studied them all, but here's one of the characteristics. These men, these high performance individuals, doesn't matter whether you like them or dislike them, none of that, just learn. Like my father says, you can learn something from everyone. You can learn something from a, a bum on the street. You can learn something from a, every person you meet, if you have an open mind, you can learn something from. So cut that horse shit out about, well, I don't agree with a person's politics or I don't agree with a person's, you know, whatever. And it's like, you're either a student or you're not. And in these cases, it's just, it's a learning, it's, a, it's, a, it's something I learned that these men and women, Margaret Thatcher was the same, Oprah was the same, they refuse, they refuse to waste one second of their precious daily deep work and magic time. So what wastes energy, not necessarily waste, but what uses up your precious one to three hours? Well, decision-making, if you check your phone, you're just wasting that precious time. But even if you're working in a, in a good environment, like eventually I can only write for, you know, an hour or two. I can only shoot a video for so long until I'm just spent. So 
Um, like these guys, whether it's Trump or whether it's Jobs or whether it's Bezo or whoever these people, Michael Jordan, is they refuse to waste a second on stuff that's low end. That'll, that'll suck their energy and their time. So this is the reason that I, I talk about Donald Trump and how he dresses himself. Same thing with Steve Jobs, how he dresses himself. Same thing with Nick Saban's morning routine. These guys are creatures of habit. Um, back in the day, they didn't diagnose this stuff, but these are OCD guys. Are you kidding me? These guys run the same playbook 365 days a year, year after year, decade after decade. Get up, do the same thing again. We're all hardwired to be creatures of habit, but these guys are next level. So I've read several places that, you know, Trump is a perfect example. He gets up at the same time every day. He has the same morning routine. He's a, he's a slow starter. He doesn't do any public work unless he has to do 11 a.m. But he dresses the same every single day. So the guy has over a hundred navy blue suits, right? It's always dark and navy blue. It almost looks black. And he has hundreds of crisp white shirts. And he has some ties. He had red ties. He has blue ties. He has black ties. And before he was president, he had pink ties. He literally sells them. But do you see what he's doing? It's his uniform. When he gets up in the morning, it's no different than you leaving your walking gear right beside your bed. See, when you get up in the morning and you don't have to think about it, you just put on your shorts, your t-shirt, your sweatshirt, and you're gone. See, you didn't, ex you didn't expend any of your precious mental energy. It's still there. It's bottled up and you can use it. When you get up in the morning and you check your phone and then you're looking for a t-shirt and you can't find your sweatshirt and your ball cap, that's the kind of stuff that just takes your precious magic time and just filters it away. Then all of a sudden, you know what? The day's gone. So they do the opposite. Trump never, ever, ever spends one second wondering what he's gonna wear. He just gets up, he does his thing, he puts on what he calls his uniform, and he decides on a tie and he's gone. So he expended this much time and effort into what he wears. This is his uniform and that's it. He doesn't open loops and worry about things and spend, you know, 25 minutes, get none of it. It's the same as leaving your shoes at the front door when you walk. I don't wanna think about it, so I trip over my stuff. I don't trust myself. So I do what these guys do. Like I leave my stuff out the night before for walking right beside my bed. It's pitch dark when I get up. My wife's in bed, my daughter's in bed. I don't wanna be stumbling around and looking for stuff. I wanna start my day with prayer, brush my teeth and out the door I go. It's just like the two glasses of water that are waiting for me in the kitchen on the island. I pour those the night before so that when I come down in the, in the dark, I'm just like, boom, boom, and they're both gone. I don't wanna be stumbling around in the dark kitchen, turning on lights and, and trying to make, you know, I, it's all ready for me. So I got these little wins, but I'm not expending any of my precious morning time on it. My deep work and my magic time. Same thing, like my cell phone isn't turned on. I don't have any, um, I don't have any way of being sucked into politics or the news. I don't watch any TV. I don't have my cell phone accessible. So I'm not wasting any of that precious morning time, especially the first hour. Well, Trump does the same thing by dressing the same way. He always looks professional. He always looks like uh, the best dressed guy in the room, but he puts no thought into it. And Kevin O'Leary on Shark Tank is another guy, a high performance guy who they did this for a number of years. Like he calls it his uniform. So he's like, I own 50 black suits. I own 50 white or shirts. And he goes, I own five pair of shoes. And I, owe, I, owe, oh, <laughs> I own 50 of these black ties. He takes it to the next level. He's a guy who literally gets up 
and he works out in the morning, he watches the financial news, and then at 6.30 every morning, O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, he just showers and shaves and puts on the exact same uniform every day. And of course he looks fantastic. He always looks like the best dressed guy, but he doesn't waste a friggin' second stumbling around like an amateur. He puts on the black suit, he puts on the white sh crisp sh shirt, he puts on the tie, he puts on his shoes and he's gone. And this is how these guys are productivity machines. They don't minor, they don't major in minor things. Like the great Jim Rome said, 99% of the normies, the tomato cans, the brokies, what do they do differently? They major in minor things. Minor things like, where are my shoes? Where, where, I gotta drink some water. Where's my journal? Where do I write my goals? Where's my sweatshirt? Where, where's my rucking vest? You know, where's my computer? What am I gonna write about? Where, where's my book? Where's my highlighters? Where, where's, where's this? Where's the good food I need to eat? It's just all fucking rookie shit. I mean, if I follow you around for a day in the first hour, I can figure out whether you're a champion or a chump. And it's all comes down to what Jim Rome said about, you got to train yourself to make, to only, only major in major things. Stop majoring in minor things. So you've got O'Leary and you've got Trump and then Steve Jobs, he took it to a new level with that same outfit he wore every day, the black turtleneck and the jeans, right? Well, that was just a uniform for him. He had a hundred pair of jeans and a hundred black turtle, but it became his signature, right? Up on stage, it's like, oh, he's a cool dude or whatever, but that's not why he did it. He did it because he didn't want to think about anything else except computing. And when he'd get up in the morning and he'd shave and he'd shower, he'd put on the same uniform. Now it's easy to say, well, that sounds like a pretty boring life and stuff and whatever, but it's not. I'm talking about the details that don't matter. Like who gives a shit what dress shoes a person wears? If you have a winning outfit for business, you wear it. I have a winning uniform for my webinars and my masterminds. That's what I wear. I don't have to think about it for a second. I have a winning uniform for these videos. That's what I wear. I don't have to think about it. I'm not looking out, looking for a rucking vest and a different jacket and a different hat. This is what works for me. And I don't have to expend any of my precious, precious deep work time or any of my magic time on it. So, I mean, Jobs was a machine. He didn't want to spend any of his time on anything but building Macintosh and Apple. That's all he wanted to do. So the last thing that cat wanted was to be worried about fashion or any of that stuff. Did not, like, how are you? It didn't matter one little bit to him. He was, what was he? He was majoring in major things. You know, creating products that were gonna transform how we live. And that's all he cared about. And you can just go on and on. I read the other day about Sabin, like the same morning, 365 days a year. Doesn't matter if he's on vacation, doesn't matter if he's in season, doesn't matter even that he's retired now. This guy, same time up every day, same time to bed, let the dog out, pour a cup of coffee in the dark, get, eat two of those cookies that he does every day of his life, and then they get to work. These guys get to work. They're not like sitting around, you know, meditating for an hour or writing or talking to themselves in the mirror or, you know, and doing some interpretive dance or any of that stuff. These guys get up, they own the first hour of the day, they don't spend any time on minor things and they get to work. They get to work. Now that I think about it, my, my dad, it was just like breakfast, read the paper, up early, cup of coffee, upstairs to shower for 70 years, put on a suit and tie, never gave it any thought, and just boom, gone to work. Gone to work, the uniform on. So you may think that this is like, oh my God, OCD. 
But you know what? Those guys are peak high performance people for a reason. They don't waste their time on, on things that don't matter. They don't waste their time on things that don't matter. So really something to think about is, is there ways in your world that um, tomorrow can start today? Can you put out your shoes if you want to walk? Can you put out your t-shirt and your, and your shorts? Can you put out your ball cap so that you're ready to walk? Can you put out the weight, the water on the kitchen? Can you put out, can you fill your fridge with the foods that you want? Uh, can you get rid of the stuff in your, in your environment that you don't want? Can you get rid of the booze and the social media apps on your phone? Is there a place you can lock away your phone when you go to bed at night so that you're not tempted to, to, uh, to look at it? That's controlling your environment. That's controlling the controllable. And that's what these high performance coaches, entrepreneurs, inventors, artists, musicians, they all do the same stuff. They major in only major things. Do yourself a favor and stop. Stop today majoring in minor things. So I have a special promotion for the February edition of my Righteous Michael McLean World Building Letter. It's the newsletter that does what? It teaches you how to grow a pair and it teaches you how to build a life you never need to escape from. That's what it's all about for me. My North Star is personal sovereignty. My North Star is, uh, is autonomy and freedom. And that's what my newsletter does. It's a real new newsletter, paper and ink. And it's $97 a month for that big, jumbo, ugly envelope that I ship to your home or business every month. Are you kidding me? It's, it's, it's less than a sugar cup of coffee a day. It's less than a Starbucks cup. It's like $3.45 a day for membership into my brotherhood and I ship it to you. But I'm gonna make it even a no-brainer for you because you know how I'm doing the State of the Union. I do that in January. So you missed out big time. You missed out on the January edition. Maybe you're too cheap or maybe you're a bargain hunter or maybe you're one of these guys. When there's a recession, you cut education. Well, you know what? Champions actually double down on education when there's a recession, when things are tougher, and they get rid of what? All the entertainment. Get rid of the Netflix, get rid of the applications, get rid of TV, get rid of the booze, get rid of the gambling, get rid of the entertainment that you're hiding in, and come out into the real world and invest in books, invest in newsletters, invest in podcasts, invest in masterminds. When everybody's at home hiding under their, their bed in the fetal position with three masks on, you need to do the exact opposite as a badass. Now is the time to play offense. Now that we're into a, a recession, we don't know what's coming, people are scared, people are watching the news, they're afraid of their shadow. Now's the time to go all in on offense, play offense. Every day I drop my kid off at school, I'm like, play to win. Play offense, be relentless. And that's what you need to do. And that's what this newsletter is all about. So let me play offense. Let me swing for the fences here. So I'm gonna do something I've never done before. If you sign up for the February edition, $3.45 a day, I'm gonna throw in the January edition in the envelope as well. It's 22 pages, it's 15 badass rules that'll transform your life. It's the inserts, my a letter, my birthday letter to my wife is in there. Uh, there's articles on, on uh, the Winnipeg Jets. There's an article in there on walking as a family. And I'm gonna print that off at my expense and I'm gonna put it in with your February edition. So you get to play catch up, you get to fix your mistake and you get to restart 2024. So all together with those two newsletters, you're gonna have all 25 rules. It doesn't get any better than that. You get all 25 rules for the price of one. I'm only gonna charge you the 97, but it even gets better. I'm gonna do one more for you, is I am going to uh, mail you with the two newsletters, one of these black badass t-shirts. 
They kick ass. They're collector's editions. You can't buy them anywhere else. I only give them with my books and my newsletters. It says badass on the front and it says be relentless on the back. Your kids will love these. I love these. Um, it's just, it's just, I mean, the best shirt. I wear it to the gym. I wear it when I'm playing pickleball. Everybody asks me about it, but there's none of these available. So I'll throw one of those in the big package. So on your doorstep in February, you're going to have both editions. You're going to have the t-shirt all for $97. The link is below badassletter.coach. That's badassletter.coach. And there's never been a better time to go all in, to play offense, to play to win than right now. And that link is below and you can sign up and I will get that package to you this coming month. So you have the entire state of the union address. You have the free t-shirt. You have everything that you are wanting. And it's time to start, stop medicating and sedating. And it's time to start uh, thinking about, you know what? I'm gonna build a world I no longer need to vacation from. I'm gonna build a world where I, uh, I live life and do business on my own terms. Just remember what I talked to you about, the importance of majoring, majoring in major things. No more majoring in minor things. No more majoring in minor things. Protect the first hour of your day Make sure the first hour of the day belongs to you. It's for your top priorities. Claim your day, protect your magic time, protect your deep work time, and see what happens in the next several weeks. Like my dad, my dad, 90 year old young dad says, Michael, the best is yet to come. The best son is yet to come. Two words that changed my life, two words that can change yours. Be relentless.